It's a tragic fact that the army, like all other large organisations, suffers casualties and accidents which could and should have been avoided. Although in the army we are unique in the sense that we face very special demands in terms of training for our operations with self-evidently dangerous equipment, nevertheless there are moral, legal and financial imperatives that make it essential to manage our risks to safety carefully and responsibly. We can be proud of our safety record generally, but we can and must still do better. Now, of course, it's essential that we continue to train hard and in a robust way, or we will simply transfer risk from training to operations. In fact, we have a duty in health and safety law to provide the right training for our soldiers and officers. And this sometimes means putting them in hazardous, albeit sensibly controlled, situations in training. We need to do this to be properly prepared for the deeply challenging conditions we frequently face on operations. But to allow serious, completely avoidable accidents is frankly unacceptable. So we must continually strive to manage our risks better. And this means commanders at all levels paying close attention to risk mitigation measures in training. Now the ideal situation is when those undergoing training perceive a high degree of risk, as would be the case on operations, but that the actual risk has been driven down to negligible levels. And away from training, there can be no excuse for reckless neglect of safety in operationally benign, non-tactical situations, even when we're deployed. Frankly, we can't afford to waste lives like that.